In this video, we're looking at wax moth and how they infest your hive and how to prevent that from happening. But before we look at the destruction that wax moth can cause, let's first just talk about what the wax moth actually is. There's two main species of wax moth, the lesser wax moth and then the greater wax moth. They are commonly found in beehives, so they're attracted to beehives and um, this is where they have their full life cycle within a beehive. They have the normal life cycle that a butterfly has where they have a egg, a larva and then they pupate and then the moth. So the normal uh, metamorphosis that any moth or butterfly has. The larva feeds on wax pollen and honey inside the hive and although we consider them a pest for our bees they're actually doing an important role from an ecological perspective where they're decomposing the the hive and processing the material so that there's nothing left inside the hive once they've completed their job. So why do we get wax moth in our hives? There's a few reasons, uh, one of them being the colony is very weak and can't combat the moth. So, so the moth gets the opportunity to lay eggs in the hive and the bee can't control that. The second thing is bee abandonment and this hive here is one where uh, the bees have abandoned the hive and it's probably the most common one that I experience where the bees leave the hive and they leave behind some of the resources that they had and the wax moth then starts to decompose that. They generally like areas where the weather is quite warm and they thrive in, in these particular places. So in a colder climate you might not be getting too much wax moth unless you have a couple of warm days otherwise here in South Africa we do tend to deal with them fairly often and as I said they tend to find our abandoned hives I only have had one hive where it was a wee colony that was actually struggling to keep the wax moth at bay so that leads into us asking the question well how, how do we actually keep our hives from being infested with wax moth and the simple answer is to make sure that your colonies are as strong as possible. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Obviously, if you've got two weak colonies, you can combine them together to make a stronger colony. And therefore, you'll not get wax moth uh, as a problem in that particular hive. Doing regular hive inspections and hive maintenance allows you to see how strong the colony is within the hive and make a decision whether to combine it and also take out any old comb that the bees aren't using because this is where the wax moth could possibly go and lay its eggs. Also when you're storing your hives, uh, you need to store them in a place which is cooler and well ventilated. Possibly store your old comb with a queen excluder below it and have it open so that the air can flow through the box and this will prevent moth from going onto that old comb. Regular inspections also allow you to be able to see whether or not a colony is going to be susceptible to wax moth and allow you to make decisions quite quickly. So hive maintenance is probably the most critical uh, prevention method that you can have in terms of making sure that wax moth does not infest your hives. As I mentioned, I've only had one hive where it, it was a, a weak hive and the wax moth were uh, infesting that hive and I was able to save it but I didn't actually do it by combining that weak hive with another weaker hive um, and if you want to see how I actually did that then I recommend you take a look at this video.